place, a compound. We have a community. In just 10 seconds, this movie has already made me think of Lost, The Walking Dead, I Am Legend, and The River Wild. Someone call Guinness, since I don't think this amount of derivative will happen this quickly ever again. The fastest way to get here is by the river, and I don't think you could make it with kids. But you have to do it blindfolded anyway, right? So what difference would kids make on this journey? Listen to me. I'm only gonna say this once. I know Mallory's trying to get their attention, but why only say this once? They're f***ing kids, man. And you'll have plenty of time to whisper reminders of pertinent information during this very long trip. Boy, you have your dog. Girl, you have your kitty. Coincidentally, boy, you have your dog, girl you have your kitty was the title of the children's book my parents used when it was time for the talk. <laughs> Roll parrots! And here's the first of many questions about the logistics of this threat. If they can even see partially through these blindfolds, how are they 100% effective at keeping the scary ghost thingies from doodadding their psyche? If Mallory's this unconcerned about the sound, why are they f***ing whispering? Have you ever been rowboating or canoeing before? If you're not paying attention, your dominant arm will row a lot stronger than your non-dominant arm, and you'll go right into the bank over and over again. So how the f*** is Mallory staying this straight while blindfolded? It's not even like she's a boating expert. The movie doesn't even suggest that she's ever done this before. Meanwhile, back at Rachel Lee Cook's studio from She's All That. The store was packed. This thing seemed serious. Wow, you literally have no food. Man, Sarah Paulson's a great actress, so it really took an impressively awful script for her to deliver dialogue like this. Don't yet know what is causing the mass suicides in Europe and Russia. Forgetting the question about why the whole thing started in Russia in the first place, why are the grocery stores here so f***ing packed? Also, how did the news get this footage? Anyone that's filming this is either about to be dead or is already dangerously psychotic. I guess the only way it's possible is if Jake Gyllenhaal's character from Nightcrawler delivered it. Thankfully, the movie shows us an arrow from Russia to Alaska, because if it hadn't, I don't know how we could ever have figured out how it jumped over Sarah Palin's backyard fence and made its way into the U.S. Wow, such... Venom. No, that was a different symbiote-based plague that sought to destroy the lives of anyone who looked at it. And it even had weird eye effects, too. So I understand your confusion. I love my house. I know it took you a long time to find a studio you loved. Jesus Christ. I know I just sinned the dialogue in this scene, but it's so unnatural and cringy that I'm just gonna add 20 extra sins here and call it a day. This is the kind of movie you're watching. This is a perfect example. Having a rando sweatsuit woman hammered into my eyeball so we can have some sort of connection with her when she dies in a few minutes. Are you not entertained? Don't you know, Doctor, that if you just don't acknowledge a thing, it simply goes away. So does does that mean the whole blindfold thing is a metaphor for denial? If so, doesn't that make denial a good thing, since not seeing the creatures is the only way to be safe? The themes in this movie are more muddled than subtle, and they are leaving me befuddled. It's too bad we're not horses. It is too bad. It'd be great to be a horse, and we would have, like, a mother who would have actually raised us. Can you imagine how infuriating it must be to be around when these two are talking? But if that's not what you want, there are plenty of couples who are desperate to adopt a child. Mallory is pretty pregnant here, right? And she clearly had this attitude from the beginning. So why is this conversation just coming up now? Rando sweatsuit lady is doing what I've been keeping myself from doing for the first 10 minutes of watching this movie. Also, later we're shown that all infected people have their eyes do that weird thing. So why is this girl still all clear eyes, full hearts? My phone is in the back seat. Deus ex ringtonica. Oh my god, what the is that? Mallory eventually looks exactly at the same spot that Jessica does, but suffers no ill effects, and this movie can already f the hell off. Stop it! Stop it! The fact that Mallory is able to prevent Jess from driving into traffic brings up an interesting question. Can't an infected person be prevented from killing themselves? I know they've come up with all kinds of clever ways for self-harm, but you could totally restrain some motherfuckers, like Simon Pegg does with Nick Frost at the end of Shaun of the Dead, but no one even attempts that here. Don't worry, Mal, I bet they're just cans. They're just cans! All these assholes are running out in the open, and not one of them has been affected by the actual phenomenon. Are these ghost demons just pacing themselves or something? She went to help you, now she's gone. And with that line, we can clearly tell that John Malkovich has downshifted into Aragon Con Air mode for this performance. Come in, come inside the house. Why would anyone think at this point that being inside the house would be any safer than outside? Look, movie, I'm not saying you have to explain everything, but maybe explain something. The thing's with your nervous system. I've been seeing in my clients for weeks. Weeks? Weeks! Were the terror demons seriously hanging around here for weeks, but didn't want to reveal themselves to anyone until Larry the Demon got back from terrorizing Russia? Okay, I've already questioned how the hell they got the footage to the newsroom, but why the hell does the news need this tracking shot of a goddamn horse, besides reminding Mallory about her dead sister? God, I hate this movie so hard. Also, we're about to see that viewing the demons, I'm just gonna go ahead and call those f***ing things demons, by the way, on a screen produces the same effect as seeing them in person, so it's clear that movie chose ham-handed exposition over logic in this scene. It won't be the last time. If you go outside, you'll die. Maybe children are out there. Yes, because the only thing that can combat these all-powerful supernatural entities from coming inside a house is their natural enemy, a wooden door. The president has declared a state of emergency and has closed all borders. Not because of this attack, mind you, but we wanted to keep you up on the other news of the day. It's game, man. Huh? I'm sorry, what? You know, it's that thing Doctor Strange said in Infinity War that led to his ultimate demise, and the catalyst to the future phases of the MCU. Let me start from the beginning. The end credits scene in 2008's 
Iron Man had a cameo by Nick Fury and got the surrogate from ancient Christian occult beliefs that made pregnant women encounter their unborn children as other creatures. Conveniently knowledgeable grocery store clerk is convenient. You got the puka from Celtic mythology. Charlie is clearly much more interested than the movie is in explaining this phenomenon. But then she got this look on her face. Whoa there, Sandy. Has anyone told you what kind of movie you're in and that you don't have to try this hard? Look at Malkovich. You can actually see the phone in his hand. She got so sad. And just does not get sad. Wait, is the movie a metaphor for depression now? Is it saying the answer to depression is to just not acknowledge it? I hate to keep beating Sarah Paulson's dead horse here, but we're never given enough pieces in the movie for any of this to make sense. So nothing happened between the arrival at the house and bedtime? No snippets of news or calls getting through or even more theories from Charlie? My point is, everyone got to this house in the middle of the day, so this immediate cut to bedtime is f***ing weird. Awesome! We're gonna be jumping back and forth between these two timelines. Are we about to cut to Tom Hardy in a plane? She'd better be rowing that boat to Dunkirk. <laughs> Oh no, the birds are going crazy, which means something. I guess they're saying the demons are close, but does it really f***ing matter if you don't look at them? This movie is titled after this goddamn bird box, but it serves very little to the overall story. What kind of law do you practice? Bankruptcy. When he's not suing his neighbors. Man, I haven't seen this much expositional bitchiness since the last Real Housewives reunion show. Since you have no idea how it works. Okay, fine. She knows her way around a shotgun, but the Foley artist doesn't, because that definitely sounds like empty shells hitting the ground. When not a single shot has been fired. Great. Now we can all starve here in the maternity ward. He may be an asshole, but Douglas would be excellent at cinema sins. Wait, I phrased that wrong. Douglas would be excellent at cinema sins because he's an asshole. Maybe we can see better than we thought. BD wrong. Why would they leave Dr. Wu alone in this room? They've tied him up as a precaution, but couldn't someone sit on the other side of those monitors so if something goes wrong, they can know? It's not like he can make them look. Not a chance. The world's ending, baby, so... You never know. And this is how Machine Gun Kelly and probably ended up dating Halsey. Oh no, not the wind, if I know my happenings. And I like to think I do. Some it's about to go down. You gotta move. You gotta move. <laughs> or you could at least try to see if Greg's still alive, right? I know there's a lot of blood, but has anyone even checked his f***ing vitals? We're never getting out of here. <laughs> no one's coming for us. Alita, rattled angel. We interrupt this Bird Box movie to bring you several minutes of Sandra Bullock wandering aimlessly around an expensive house at night. Of all the supposed horrific images in this movie, this is definitely the one that will haunt my dreams. That's something you can't unsee. But you just came out here. How does Tom even know what she did or didn't see? How does he even know what they're doing in there? Tom's omniscience is mind-boggling. I've seen one. I've seen the truth! Oh, look. Some people can see them and not kill themselves. And the movie will totally use that information to make an interesting and relevatory point later, right? Seriously, the sucker asks 100 questions and leaves about 125 of them unanswered. Take your blindfold off! <laughs> so, do the birds also go nuts if there's an unblinded person around? And if so, why weren't they making noise when he was yelling at them before? God damn, these eponymous birds are f***ing useless. Everyone must look! Everyone must look! This was what Netflix demanded when it pushed this movie to the top of every browse page for a full month. We we'll run out of food and there's no help coming. I might know where we can get more. The field's market. I mean, yeah, did no one think about going to the grocery store? I know the logistics of getting there are hard, but the movie's trying to say it's a revelation that there's a market nearby. I'll come. It's a death wish. I have the training, it'll be fine. Yes, because Lucy's gone through the police academy, it makes her uniquely qualified to join a bird box challenge to raid an abandoned supermarket. That's what they teach you on, like, the third day. How is driving blind safe? Or not. We the GPS. <laughs> Does that GPS have the location of every abandoned vehicle that might be blocking their own? What about downed electric lines or poles? What about once you're in the parking lot? Even with proximity sensors, this would be a doomed mission from the start. We have the GPS. Luckily for the survivors and this movie, Greg just happened to have a ton of black paint sitting around his garage. I know they were renovating and all, but even so, who has this much f***ing black paint? Continue straight. Tom's ability to drive straight, even with the help of the GPS, is even harder to believe than Mallory paddling swiftly along the river. Remember when Ricky Bobby tried to drive blindfolded? How'd that work out? So, can you see these ghost demons or not? Make up your goddamn mind, movie! Oh my god. Jack f***ing pot. Yes, because no one, not even the crazy believer guy that's literally outside the back door, thought to break a window and raid the local f***ing grocery store. Damn it! I've seen a lot of dumb f***ing movies, but this is the dumbest mother f***ing stupid ass bull movie I've seen in a long time. Okay, has this store been raided or not? The bakery section is completely empty, and the end cap with all the shampoo looks like it's been picked over, but there are clearly many items left over, especially the ones that are most useful in a post-apocalyptic setting. Charlie said he locked up when all the shit went down, and the lock was still locked when they got here, so what gives? There was some extremely mild looting for cookies and head and shoulders, and then they locked up after themselves? This is... Truly the happiest place on earth. I thought I'd run out of previous movies that this one rips off, but then I remember this exact scene happens in 28 days later. So I'll add it to the growing list that already includes
included Zombieland, The Happening, The River Wild, Pitch Black, and A Quiet Place. So we could have messed some other way. Sure. Could have been your your babysitter. And just then, a new category of post-apocalyptic pregnant babysitter porn emerged on all the popular sites. Man, this market has some super fresh poultry. All of us are making the end of the world great again! Take it from someone who's tried to shoehorn in many, many Trump jokes that just didn't work. This Trump joke does not work. There is no statistical, logical, or legal argument for trying to get back there. I'm with Teddy KGB here. If nothing else, instead of trying to take as much of the food back to the humans, why not just bring the humans to the food? You guys, there's something wrong? This movie is about to give us two key pieces of information here with zero context as to reasons or meaning. First, the birds seem to go crazy, and second, Charlie describes his friend as a bit crazy. So apparently crazy people can see it and not kill themselves, and then immediately want others to see it too. And the birds are somehow aware of who the good guys and the bad guys are, or maybe when the creatures are nearby. But once again, for those in the back, why? How? At this point, we should probably just all stop asking and let the movie finish humping our legs so we can move on with our day. Also, are we really going to make mental illness the avenue that allows humans to live but also turns them into psychopathic disciples of the smoke monster? Are you feeling icky yet? No? Give it time. You'll get there. <laughs> There are literally a million other ways to handle this situation, and this is definitely the dumbest. Let the dude in, close the door, and then shoot him if you need to. Tom's primary character trait was listed as someone who immediately gets everyone away from the people that are maybe, but not definitely dead. You were at a fully stocked grocery store and you left this much room in the vehicle? How is there not food piled to the ceiling here? You've even got extra room that's Charlie-shaped. The fact that two of the supposed main characters of this movie steal away in the middle of the night, never to be seen or referenced again, says a lot about how much this movie cares about its audience. Where's the goddamn car? You guys, you guys, where are Lucy and Felix? Jesus, has Mallory done a full house check? Like, it's possible they ran away, but she knew this instantly? I've seen a lot of post-apocalyptic movies, and this one has the easiest rating by far that I've ever seen. Seriously, if the little girl doesn't get out of the boat, which is extremely out of character, mind you, this shit's a breeze. Yeah, what the hell? Just shoot it. Hell, it may actually kill one of them, for all we know about these f***ing things. At the end of my deployment in Iraq. Of course Tom has a military background. He couldn't just be an average Joe with an incredible set of muscles. It's like how every Dwayne Johnson movie has to explain how he was a professional athlete or ex-special forces, despite being currently employed as a marine biologist. Hello? Is anyone out there? Hello? I wish this movie would decide what it's gonna be. There's a point here where it's trying to be a meditative drama about relationships and humanity. But then you remember that they're being held captive by evil space ghosts, and all the relatability flies out the window with a Olympia. They're off to me. I don't believe it. He's lying. Good intuition, but how is he lying? All those other assholes can't talk about anything other than how you have to see the demons. But Gary comes in and presents himself like a regular dude. How can he do that? Why can he do that? Who can he do that? <laughs> they broke in. Damn it, they dragged Tom Hollander into this shit too? I don't think I've ever seen a better collection of talent in a shittier movie. Well, okay, except for Gangster Squad. Get up and get- Character is hit in the head with a ceramic doodad and immediately loses consciousness for a convenient amount of time cliche. If something happens to me, I want you to take care of my baby. And now we've come to the problem with a non-linear timeline. Since we've already seen Sandy with two kiddos in the boat, we've known this was coming for a while. So the scene has zero tension or plot momentum, just wasted space, telling us something we already knew, because we're smart enough to literally know that one plus one equals two. I love this song. Me too. Me too. Me too. Oh no, the characters are getting along and having a nice moment during a horror movie, which cannot telegraph harder that shit is about to hit the fan. Also, can we revisit how it's possible for Psycho Gary to hold his shit together this long, including casually talking about his bop? Nope, not happening. No, it's not it's happening. I know, I too am mystified at how the script expects us to believe that you two would go into labor at the exact same time. Why does Gary wait until now to let his crazy out? If they didn't go into labor and everyone is distracted, what would be the plan? And why go through any of this when the objective is just to open the fucking windows? Fucking Gary. So, are these supposed to be drawings of the creatures? Is there any reason for him to play classical music and set them out to look at them? Why is he compelled to draw at this very moment? Why are the birds not bothered by his presence at this point? Is there air? You don't know. Whoa, one of these demon creatures is the predator? The disturbing part of this act isn't that he's putting live birds into a freezer, it's that the freezer is empty enough that it can accommodate an entire large bird cage with no problem. Sure, movie. I was confused with just the demonic drawings. Freezing the birds, tearing down the window coverings, and knocking Tom out. Thanks for the super zoom on the eyes so I could finally get that Gary's evil. Show the baby! Wow, that was quick. Did the Dementors just happen to be lurking right outside that particular window, hoping that someone would open it up? If so, really the creepiest thing about them is how stalkery they are. Danielle McDonald was ready to be done with this movie and clearly was not f***ing around. So they closed the 
the blinds and all, but is that enough? If so, why'd they previously bother with the newspaper on the windows? And isn't the window that Olympia went through wide open now? Does that mean the parademons can come in now? Yep, no need to know how they survived by themselves with two infants, how they escaped the neighborhood with no car or GPS capabilities, or anything that occurred over the past five f***ing years. Seriously, nothing like a five-year gap in time to short-circuit any immediate tension that the movie might have been building. Listen to the sounds if they're softer or louder. Oh, sure. In five years, you learned to teach echolocation, but haven't figured out something better to cover your eyes with than a flimsy blindfold that could loosen or get caught on something and fall off. So now all the marauding psychopaths have cars? And they form posses? I thought they were all like lone wolves like Gary. F***ing Gary. Man, sure is lucky that the two remaining survivors are hot. Can you imagine if Mallory ended up with Malkovich or MGK? Ah, yes. Remember when these two fell in love and how we're invested in their relationship because of what it meant for them to find each other? No, no you don't. Because it all happened in the last five years that apparently we aren't allowed to know anything about. You need to see clearly. You will have to look. Rick is a total dick. You're telling me the only way motherfuckers made it to Shangri-La is by using a sacrificial lamb? What happens after they look? The rest of the people in the boat just throw them overboard? Please. Surviving is not living, Mal! Jesus, this story's gotten so stale and rote and cliche that I'm actively hoping Gary comes back from the dead to stir some shit up. I know they're trying to survive and all, but what would happen if there was a group of people in here? Opening that door would assuredly kill them, right? I'm just saying, is it that hard to knock or announce your presence before breaking in? Why does every single one of these homes have their windows covered with newspapers? Think about it. Would you even have enough newspaper to cover one window in your house? Do newspapers even still exist? This is what strawberry tastes like. Oh no, the characters are getting along and having a nice moment during a horror movie, which cannot telegraph harder that it's about to hit the fan. Seriously, movie, you just tried to pull this 20 minutes ago. Anybody home? <laughs> what? Out of all the houses in all the neighborhoods in Northern California, these assholes show specifically up here? Along with being psychos, are they also psychic? <laughs> so even though he's been infected by the paranormal pink eye, Tom still has enough self-control that he can protect Mallory? I guess her sister didn't love her this much, considering she tried to drive both of them off the road at the beginning of the movie. They've been on the river for 42 hours, and I have to say, I'm really feeling like the events in this movie might be happening in real time. There's only one way for me to navigate through them. Somebody has to look. Here's the problem with the somebody's gotta look bullshit in this movie. Are they saying you can take a quick peek and then you'll be able to navigate the entire rabbit? Or someone has to be on the lookout the whole time, despite the fact that they could be demon food at any time? Because neither explanation holds a drop of water. The birds in the box survived this. Keep ringing, girl! She knew how to ring the bell. She knew how to keep her eyes closed. But she didn't know to put her blindfold back on, even though it's right there on her head. Did you guys hear those birds? That's where we're headed, okay? We just followed that sound. Are there no other birds in the woods, though? I get that the compound said they had a bunch of birds, but do they have all the birds? I'm right here. Several minutes of voices, wind, birds, spirits, leaves, none of which have any f***ing explanation. So I'm gonna give this two fingers, one big old skip, and 30 extra cents. Dun dun dun! The safe place is the school for the blind! Wait, what? How is that a twist? What does it solve? Are the creatures scared of the blind? Do the blind have superpowers against them? Just because the blind can't see the creatures doesn't make the sighted any safer, right? Also, is this school in the middle of the woods at the end of a river? What kind of a sick joke is it to build a school for the blind in one of the most remotest and most difficultest places to navigate to? Oh look! It's an outdoor sanctuary that somehow doesn't allow the demons in because of the foliage and birds and whatnot. And that makes total sense. <laughs> this movie. Mallory? Don't do that, man. Somehow, the fact that Mallory's gynecologist is in this exact spot more than five years after the event is the most disorienting part of this movie. And let me tell you, that's saying something. He killed him! He killed it! I believe they've been abducting black people Brainwashing them, making them work for them as sex slaves and shit. Oh, sorry about the shit. So you have my money? The horse. You and a horse you rode in on. How much longer? Are we there yet? No. Are, Are we, we there, there yet? yet? No. Are, Are we, we there, there yet? I need to talk to you about the rapids. Is this the biggest one, Mom? Well, the biggest one is Gauntlet. That's a five plus. That's off the scale. Don't look at the light! I can't help it. It's so beautiful. Mallory? Mallory Hayes? Phil? Phil, come 